I, uh, I nicknamed them the firm because I thought Reeby, Reeby, Brathove, and Perko sound, <laughs> sound like a law office <laughs> or some accountants. But uh, you make beautiful music. Thank you. Our second scripture lesson is also from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. It's found at the very, begin, at very end of page 21 in the New Testament of the, of the Pew Bibles. Jesus uh, is once again telling a parable about the kingdom of heaven. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and at about three o'clock, he did the same. And at about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those who had been hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them uh, also uh, received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I, what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Let's bow in prayer. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In 2013, the Seattle Seahawks acquired a wide receiver from the Minnesota Vikings, named Percy Harvin. They gave him a multi-year contract worth $67 million, $25 million of which was guaranteed. But if you haven't heard of Percy Harvin, there's a reason. He missed almost the entire season with injuries. He played only one game, one regular season game for the Seahawks in 2013. And in that one game, he caught, because he was injured on injured reserve the rest of the season. In that one game he played, he caught one pass for 17 yards. $67 million for 17 yards. But when the Seahawks made it to the Super Bowl, Pete Carroll, the coach, wanted Percy Harvin on the field, so he activated him. He'd missed almost the entire season, but he activated him, suited him up, and joined the team. Now, at that point, I could imagine some of the other players wondering, who, what's this guy doing here? He played one game, one lousy game, while the rest of us, most of them, played the entire season. 16 games, 64 quarters. They, they, they uh, endured the practices day after day, the training, the, the physical punishment that a body takes playing professional football. 
They, they endured the, the heat and humidity of playing the Carolina Panthers in Charlotte in early September. And the cold of playing the New York Giants at, oh, oh, at, in New York in, in December. They endured the, the hostile jeers of opposing crowds and the disappointment of their own fans when they lost a home game. They went through the ups and downs of a whole season, and here was this new guy practically joining the team for the first time at the Super Bowl and, to make matters worse, getting paid most, more than most of them. There could have been, I'm just saying, there could have been a little resentment. There certainly was resentment in Jesus' parable. Now, this is a strange parable, this parable called the laborers of the vineyard. There's a lot of peculiar things going on here. For example, first, there's the vineyard owner. Early in the morning, he goes down to labor ready. They didn't call it that in Jesus' time. But that's what we call it here in Spokane, you know. Uh, some of the guys we visit at House of Charity go down to Labor Ready. Labor Ready is where you go to get a temporary day job in Spokane. Uh, the owner goes down to Labor Ready to hire some workers for his vineyard. He agrees to pay them the usual daily wage, which in that time was a denarius. So far, nothing unusual. But then the owner goes back four more times to hire more laborers uh, every three hours. At, at, at first, at, first at six in the morning, then at nine, then at noon, then at three, and finally he goes back at 5 p.m. an hour before closing to hire more workers. That's weird. Nobody goes down to labor ready at 5 p.m. to get agricultural workers. There's only, especially in the Middle East, there's only an hour of daylight left. Why does the vineyard owner do that? Why does the vineyard owner keep going back again and again to hire more workers, even when there's only an hour left? All right, let me come back to that question in a moment. Because now let's look at the workers for a moment. Some of them are there first thing in the morning, and they get hired right away, and they know that at the end of the day, they're going to get a full day's pay. But some don't get hired until 9 in the morning, three hours later. And some at noon. And some at 3. And some don't get hired until an hour before closing. Now, what's with that? I mean, did they simply not get hired at 6 in the morning? Or did they not show up at 6 in the morning? See, we're not told. We, we don't know. We don't know. When the vineyard owner comes back at 5 p.m., he sounds surprised to see people still standing around without a job, which makes me think that, well, maybe they weren't there earlier. They, they tell the vineyard owner that no one hired them, but you wonder if no one hired them because they weren't there to hire. Are they lazy bums? Or are they victims of a tight job market? We're not told. But it doesn't matter because the vineyard owner wants them anyway. Either way. And then there's the pay. At the end of the day, they all get paid the same amount. At the end of the season, even though he played only one regular season game, Percy Harvin gets a Super Bowl ring. Just like everybody else. And a fatter paycheck than most. Where's the fairness? What's going on in this parable? Well, let's go back. Let's start with the owner. Why does the owner keep going back to labor ready, looking for more workers? There are two possibilities. One, the owner goes back because he needs more workers. He is desperate to get in the crop. I, we don't know the situation. I mean, maybe the grapes are starting to spoil. He's got to get them harvested. Or maybe he's got a big order to fill. We don't know. But he is desperate to get the crop in. And so he keeps going back to hire more people to, to, to get this crop in. And he pays them all the same because he's desperate. He's, because they're all crucial. Even the last hour people are crucial to getting it done. 
Possibility number one, the owner actually needs those workers. Possibility number two, the owner knows that if people don't get work, they won't be able to eat. So, the owner keeps going back again and again to hire people because even, even if they're lazy bums, he doesn't want them to starve. This also explains why he pays them all the same at the end. A denarius was not only the usual daily wage for a worker, a denarius was also the average amount needed for a worker to feed a family. So, so the owner knows that if these workers don't get, get a day's pay, they're not going to pe be able to feed their families. So the owner wants to make sure that all their families are fed, even the families of those who worked only an hour. So which is it? Does the owner hire these people out of pity or necessity? Out of a desperate need for workers or a deep desire to provide for them? Maybe it's both. Because this is clearly, whatever it is, this is clearly not a parable about uh, human resource management. I mean, really. If the word got around that the owner was hiring people at 5 p.m. and paying them for a whole day, how many people do you think would be there the next morning at 6? As a model of personnel management, this parable doesn't work. But what if it's not a, a, about personnel management? What if it's about grace? You see, in this parable, it doesn't matter how long you've worked in the vineyard. It doesn't matter how long you played on the team. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the church or how many jobs you've done in the church. What matters is that the master wants you and that the master will, will that you are all invited in. See, this, is a par this isn't a parable about employment practice. This is a parable about the kingdom of heaven. And the fact is, we would not be a part of it at all. The workers in this parable wouldn't have anything if it hadn't been for the call of the master, the call of the owner. None of the workers, even, even the ones who worked all day, would have anything if the master hadn't called them. And that's the story of the kingdom of heaven. We wouldn't be a part of it at all if it were not for the owner's grace. A fact that some of the workers in the parable did not seem to understand. So the first point is, we are all in the vineyard by the grace of the, of the owner. But the second point of the parable is, God really wants you for the vineyard. You know, Jesus provided an interesting commentary on this parable in our first scripture lesson. I, I don't know if you heard this, caught this or not, but in the first scripture lesson, Jesus says to his disciples, listen to this, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That's Jesus' two-sentence commentary on that parable. The truth is, God wants you for the harvest. This isn't an a parable about employment practices. It's a parable about the kingdom of heaven, and it tells us that God wants you for that kingdom. God wants you, all of you, to be in the game. Uh, many of you know uh, that there's an interesting conclusion to the story of Percy Harvin. As I said, last year Percy Harvin played one regular season game in which he caught one pass for 17 yards. And yet, Pete Carroll wanted Percy Harvin in the Super Bowl. So he activated him, took him off injured reserve, suited him up, and put him in to take the second half kickoff. And here's what happened. I think that's who they are, and that's what they'll be, and that's what they'll do, because, you know, again, to make a radical change to another personnel group, that's just not them. Okay, let's get back and join our cops. 22 zip halftime score. Against his former team, the Vikings, and they just pop it up. Good kick by Prater on a hop. It's Harvin, but now he takes off. I always want
want to show football in church. <laughs> I finally got to do it. Thank you, David Marshall. That. You know, it turns out, I didn't, I didn't know this before, but I looked it up this week. It turns out Peace, per, Percy Harvin was a, in college, was a track star. Not a football player, he was his track star. And he did play football too. But, but, but he was arguably the fastest person on the field at the Super Bowl. And so he had something special to bring. Now, now at that point, if you remember the game, at that point the Seahawks were already ahead 22 to nothing. But Percy Harvin's kickoff return, I think you could say sealed the deal. <laughs> sealed the deal. Would the Seahawks have won without Percy Harvin? Probably. But Pete Carroll wanted Percy Harvin in the game. No matter how many games he played in the regular season, he wanted him in the game because he knew Percy Harvin brought something special. Now here's the big news. God feels the same way about you that Pete Carroll felt about Percy Harvin. Will the kingdom of God come without you? Of course. But God wants you because you bring something special. Did you notice, did you notice how the vineyard owner in this parable is just like the, the uh, shepherd in the parable of the lost sheep and just like the woman in the parable of the lost coin and just like the father of the prodigal son who goes out to find the older son, the older brother, and bring him into the party. They're always looking for people. Just like the vineyard owner. Just like God. It doesn't matter whether you're a dumb sheep or an ornery kid. It doesn't matter whether you've been waiting all day for a job or whether you finally decided to get out of bed. God wants you in the vineyard. If you've been sitting on the sidelines, it's time for you to get in the game. Because you have capabilities that God, uh, to serve God that no one else has. Now, please, I'm not just flattering you here. Uh, I, I'm serious. All of you have, I mean, think about it. All of you have relationships, certain relationships with other people that are different than the relationships they have with anybody else. Every one of you has certain characteristics that let you connect with certain people better than those people connect with anybody else. You, every one of you have a history of relationships with certain people that puts you in a better position to share with them to, the love of God in Jesus Christ, to help them experience God's love in Jesus Christ than anybody else. And so you are, in effect, the worldwide body of Christ representative to that person. You are the one God wants to work in the vineyard. Whether you've been here, whether you're new or you've been here a long time, whether you've played one game or the whole season, God wants you suited up. God wants you to take the second half kickoff. Because God knows you can do with it things that nobody else can.